We'd like to welcome you back to our Take on Cruise with Roger and Shannon or... Shannon and Roger. <laughs> I'm Roger Blum with Cruise and Port Advisors. And as always, I am with... Shannon McKee of Access Cruise. And we are so happy to be back. And you know what, Roger? We have not done a current events in some time. And there has been a lot happening over the last few months and it's not been that long but just since sea trade there's been big news and just before sea trade there was big news and there's just been a complete shift at the very tippy top of every cruise line and i'm wondering how that's going to affect the cruise industry as a whole over this next year well it's true and we've discussed um the um ceos of the corporations changing over at carnival corporation with josh weinstein royal yeah. caribbean group with jason liberty Norwegian Cruise Line Holding with Harry Summer. But well, at the next level, right. you've got all of these brand CEOs. Yeah. I mean, just before Sea Trade was when Frank Del Rio announced his retirement. So that took a shift at the very top yep. of NCLH Holdings, Norwegian Cruise Line Holdings. But just below that, that means Harry Summer has taken a step up, which means we have a new president over... Norwegian Cruise Line, David Herrera, and they had already appointed two new presidents over Oceania, which was Frank Del Rio Jr., as well as Andrea or Andrea DeMarco over Regent. That's right. So all three of the NCLH brands have new leadership. Yeah. Um, in the Carnival Corporation Group, Seaborne Cruise Line, uh, Josh Leibowitz stepped down. That's right. And Natalia, and I believe you say her last name, Leahy, has taken um, the step into the president's role over at Seaborne. That's right. And then I was actually very surprised right after Sea Trade yeah. Celebrity Cruise Line, Lisa Lutoff Perlo, who has been really, she's been at that company for almost 40 years and has done wonders with a celebrity brand. She's stepping aside. You know what? That one really surprised me, I have yeah. to say. I was a little shocked by that one. I was also shocked that it didn't come out during Sea Trade, right. but waited a whole week until after Sea Trade to make that announcement. But the, the woman that is taking over, it's nice that they're going to continue on with some yeah. female leadership there which is Laura Hodges and I'm going to mispronounce her name I'm pretty sure of it which I believe is Bethka it's B-E-T-H-G-E -E. well the other change and I can pronounce it Michael Tam from <laughs> the um, Costa group which is the group that's over Costa Cruises Aida Carnival Maritime um, right after sea trade he announced after almost 20 years uh, with the group is also stepping down Oh my goodness, there's it's so many There changes. is so much happening and I wonder if it's over. I don't know. I mean, we just came out of the pandemic. I feel like this is the first year that the cruising is really back, that we're seeing every brand has all their ships back at sea, wherever it is now that Asia's reopening now, we see Japan open, Australia, New Zealand. So we really see that global cruising coming back. I think it's probably been, and I, I can't even imagine the stress that these leaders have felt over these last three years and keeping the cruise lines afloat and keeping them moving and the employees and, and the hardship that they had. So, you know, I wonder if there's going to be some other leadership changes coming here over this year. Well, you like to prognosticate. Oh, I'm not prognosticating on it. this. No but, way. <laughs> but we did talk about how there is a generational change and the cruise industry coming out of the pause really is revitalized with new blood and new energy. I think during the pause, all the cruise industry and all the cruise lines had a chance to stop and reflect and really decide what they want to do in yeah. the future. And now we're seeing so many of these changes happening. I agree with you. So I think this year is going to be an exciting year. I think anytime you get a new president in place. I mean, yep. look at Barbara Muckerman took over, over at Silver Sea just before the Christmas holidays That's too. So anytime we see those changes at the top, we're going to see shifts in the culture within each of the brands. And I think we're gonna see, you know, new paths of their, and courses set for each of these cruise lines. So it'll be an exciting year to see what's happening because as these small shifts happen at so many different cruise lines all at the same time, I really think that the, the entire course of the cruise industry could be changed. Absolutely, and by the way, you just mentioned Asia. So Asia is like the sleeping giant yeah. that <laughs> has been slower in opening up since the pause of any place else. But uh, I saw Shanghai finally got uh, its first sailing out of Shanghai just within the last couple of weeks. And an interesting announcement we didn't talk about was Disney, we all know, but that they bought the yeah. um, World Dream, that they announced that the ship is gonna be home ported in Singapore. What's also interesting is it was originally constructed for 9,500 passengers. 
Disney has announced that it will carry 6,000 passengers. Still, so, 6,000 passengers? That's a really large ship for Disney. It's a giant ship, but imagine how they're Disneyfying the ship to bring the love. <laughs> Disneyfying, you like that? I Disneyfying do. It's a new it. Word. Uh, I like it. You, um, to, you trademark that. Um, yeah, <laughs> Disney will let me get away with that one, I'm sure. Um, bringing the capacity down. But here's something to prognosticate Tell on me. that. For something, I'll just, Tell me. <laughs> Disney has never had casinos on their ships. What? But there's never been, like, Disney doesn't have casinos on their ships, but this ship's gonna sail out of Singapore. Mm. Will they have a casino in that market? Well, the other interesting question is, who's going to be the source market, right? That's always a big topic of conversation. Is Disney, by putting the ship out of there, being such a large ship, it's very different than their traditional Disney model, then are we going to be attracting at a completely different source market? I assume that the main source market will be out of Asia because there is yeah. such a giant market in Asia. But the last point I'd like to make. Okay. I am accused sometimes with my Our Take on Cruise partner over here of being ancient. <laughs> uh, we are standing in front of this. Where are we standing? We are standing in front of Plymouth Congregational Church. And it's not really all that ancient, is it? Well, you call me ancient. Um, and for, for Florida, I know most of you yeah, people around exactly. the world, in this Europe, isn't a big... like, what's ancient? Yeah. Turkey, Israel... This was built between 1897 and 1917, so I am not ancient. Okay, there, I give you that. And you probably hear, for those of you that can hear this calling going out in the background, um, this area of Coconut Grove, and especially this, this church congregational um, campus that we have here is known for their peacocks, which are all over the place right now, um, wandering around and Marie and Roger just hoping they don't find their car. They are absolutely <laughs> just spectacular to look at. Shannon, this is your hood. I can't believe you don't have a peacock here for us, I but know. we can hear them. <laughs> anyway, thanks everybody for joining us and we look forward to seeing you next week. <laughs> Bye, Bye everyone.